All right, would you take your Bibles and open them to Isaiah chapter 28. Isaiah 28, we're going to look at verse 23. As I resume my series, Fearing God, the subject today is going to be Fearing God's Answers when we pray. And let me say, as you're turning to Isaiah 28, I am convinced, always have been, always will be, that the only prayer God will hear from a lost person is when a lost person calls upon Jesus for salvation. The reason I say that is because someone who does not know Jesus does not have a relationship with him. He hears from his children who call upon him by way of prayer. Are we praying every day? We have divine access unto God. And if we're not praying, it's our own fault. He invites us to pray. He will hear our prayers and he will respond accordingly. Listen, we must fear God's answers too. Because sometimes uh, when he answers, it may not be necessarily what we ask for. But he knows what's right. And we must revere, we must respect the answers of God to our prayers. That's what this sermon I'm about to preach is all about. So would you look at verse 23 then of Isaiah 28. And there we find it says this, Give ye ear and hear my voice, hearken and hear my speech. <clears throat> Again, may, as always, the Lord bless the reading of his word. In Isaiah 55, 6 says, Call ye upon him while he is near. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. I will stand here and say that it is very clear it's the will of God, the desire of God to hear us when we pray. And not only does he want to hear from us, I will also stand here and say, I believe with all of my heart, it is God's pleasure to answer our prayers. And you heard that right. I said it is God's pleasure to, uh, to answer our prayers. In fact, God's son, Jesus, said this in Matthew 7, verse 7, in the Sermon on the Mount. He said, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. He did not say it might. He said it shall. Seek, knock, find. God will answer. God will answer all of our prayers. Amen. I stand by that. Yes. I stand that with the utmost confidence and say firmly, God will answer every prayer of a child of him. But he does it in different ways. Right. Again, in Isaiah 28, 23, he said, Give ye ear unto my voice, hearken and hear my speech. What he was saying there is, pray and I will answer you. Listen to my answer. I believe that there are three basic ways in which God answers our prayers. And they are yes, no, and not now. Let's look at them. First of all, I will stand here and say that I believe that, that God sometimes answers our prayers with a response of yes, an affirmative response of yes. Now, what must we do to get positive yes answers from God? I believe that it is absolutely necessary that we be living right, living for God. We must be living in accordance to his will if, to have any possibility of getting a yes answer from God. Uh, we must be living in accordance to his will. And let me tell you about some people who lived in accordance to God's will, that prayed. One of them was 
uh, Samuel's mother. Her name was Hannah. Hannah, I believe, was a God-fearing woman. It doesn't say a whole lot about her in 1 Samuel chapter 1, but we can uh, discern and realize and understand that basically uh, from what we see in that chapter is that she obviously must have been a godly, God-fearing, humble woman. She was barren, could not have a son. She wanted a son really bad, she and her husband, but she could not have one. This is what it says in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 10. It says, she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord, and she was... And she wept sore. She's in bitterness of soul, prayed unto the Lord, and wept sore. She prayed, weeping, crying out unto God, God, give me a son. And she even made him a promise and said, God, if you give me a son, I promise you that I'll give him back to you in service to you, to work in the temple. He will be a special baby if you give me this baby. I want a son. And it says in 1 Samuel 1 verse 19 that God remembered her and he gave her this son. Now I'm standing here to say that I believe with all of my heart that Hannah was a woman who lived her life in accordance to the will of God. So God answered with an answer of yes when she prayed. Not only must we live in accordance to God's will, but we also must pray in accordance to God's will if we want a yes answer to our prayers. See, Jesus taught his disciples that. In Matthew 6, 9 and 10, he said to them when he was teaching them how to pray, He said, after this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I'll repeat that. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus said, pray in accordance to my Father's will. Pray in accordance to the will of God. That's what we all must do. And I'll tell you this, that when we are living our life in accordance to his will, or we are praying in accordance to his will, we need to be courageous and know that His will might be a little bit different than what we anticipate. And I will also say this, hear me now, that just because we are living in accordance to his will, just because we are living a God-fearing life, just because we are living a life that is true, striving to please him in all that we do, just because we are being humble and uh, we are revering him, we are respecting him, we are fearing him, just because we are living such a God-fearing life does not guarantee a yes answer. It does not. You say, well, that doesn't sound right. No, because God is a whole lot smarter than we are. And a lot of times we think we are right and we think things should go our way and and, and he knows differently. And just because we're living a God-fearing life does not guarantee a yes answer. But on the flip side of that coin, let me stand here and also say that if we want yes answers to our prayers, then it sure would be very wise indeed for us to be living a God-fearing life and praying in accordance to his will. Because if we're out of the will of God, then we can't expect any kind of 
positive answer from him. I then go on and I say this, that when we pray, sometimes God answers our prayers with a response of no. Sometimes he says no when we pray. God, I pray for my loved one to be healed. God says no. That doesn't make one bit of sense to us, does it? God, I don't get it. I mean, you healed people when you were, your son was walking on the earth, and when he saw the blind, he made them see. When he saw the deaf, he made them hear. When he saw the lame, he helped them to walk again. God, it does not make any sense. God, heal my loved one. God says, sometimes, he says, no. Why? Does God sometimes say no? I'm going to say an answer of no could be sometimes because we are in sin. Now, I said a little bit ago that if we want yes answers to our prayer, then we need to be living in accordance to God's will, and we need to be praying in accordance to God's will. But if we're living a worldly lifestyle of sin... Why on earth would we think we deserve a yes answer when we call upon him when we're not living right? If we're living in sin, if we're living in sin, then it's, that could be the reason why God says no. And then, if this is really hard for us to comprehend. Sometimes we might be living in sin and we pray a prayer and God still and might answer yes. And you say that doesn't make sense because we don't know how God works. He's infinite. We're finite. He's holy. We're just mere mortal men and women. We don't grasp it. We don't understand it. So I'm just insinuating, I'm just suggesting that we need to be living right if we want to have a chance of having yes answers to our prayer and I will just say, logically speaking, that usually if we're living in sin, if we're living worldly, if we're living a wicked lifestyle, if we're doing things around the coming of Christ, if we're out of church and not consistently coming faithfully in the Lord's house, then, and we're not reading our Bibles every day, we're not praying every day, then I'm just saying that might be why a lot of times we get no for an answer. For I think about the Israelites, a, wor a worldly lifestyle will greatly diminish our relationship with and our connection to God. Think about the people of Israel and how they rebelled against God. They were God's people. Abraham's family, they were God's people. His chosen generation, a unique and peculiar people among all peoples on the earth the Israelites, and yet they fell into the, succumbed to the ways of the Canaanites and their religions and their, their pagan religions. The Israelites began to drift away from God as a whole, as a people. God sent prophet after prophet to warn them and tell them to stop their evil ways and to get right back with him, to get their hearts right with him again. One such prophet was Hosea, who said this in Hosea chapter 14, verse 1. He told the people of Israel, he said, Get back right with God, return unto the Lord thy God, for thou hast fallen by thine iniquity. I think about the first king of Israel. His name was Saul. Saul got jealous of David, and Saul began to hunt David down. Saul wanted to kill David. Saul, all of a sudden, he began to, to drift away from God, and God would not hear his prayers. It says in 1 Samuel 28, verse 6, it says in Saul, when he inquired upon the Lord, when he inqui inquired unto the Lord, that is, when he prayed unto God, the Lord answered him not. Saul even regressed so much, he even had to 
He even went and consulted with a witch. God would not hear his prayers. When we are living in sin, if we have evil in our heart, wickedness in our soul, we are living a life that is unbecoming of a Christian. And then we pray. And God says no sometimes because we are in sin. And then we say, God, why? I'm a church member. Oh, I know God I hadn't been in 39 years, but I'm a church member. As if that matters to God. God doesn't care if our name is on a book on this earth so much so as if our name is on his book in heaven. Well, God, one time, I remember 18 years ago, I was going every Sunday, and I was tithing. I know I hadn't done it lately, but someone hurt my feelings years ago. How do we, how, how do we think God's going to receive that? Look, if we're out of church, or if we're living in sin, and we're doing things that are either knowingly or unknowingly, uh, unbecoming of a Christian, God sometimes will just plain out, flat out say no when we pray to him. Sometimes God says no because he has a better plan. A better plan. The answer of no could be because he has a better plan. We must trust him. From 1954 through 1960, there was a uh, a sitcom comedy on television called Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young, Jane Wyman, and Eleanor, Eleanor Donahue, among others. And, and that was before my time. That was 54 through 60. I was born in 63. So that was before my time. But I did see reruns. Many of you remember the show. I did see reruns called Father Knows Best, and, uh, and I will tell you that based on the title of that TV show, that we have a Father in heaven who truly knows best. Amen. And when we pray to him, we get around this altar or at home or wherever, and we say, God, I pray for this to happen. The Father may say no because he has a, another idea or a better plan than we can perceive or know and understand. It may be hard for us to comprehend, but the Father truly knows best. For you think about this little baby, Clyde, that we are all talking about right now as he will have a funeral this coming Tuesday. Many of us pray for God to heal him. That family prayed for God to heal him. I'm sure many other Christians prayed for God to heal him. But God said no. And that may not make sense to us. That might be hard for us to figure out and understand. I know. But God perhaps had a better plan. That little baby is healed today. That little baby is in the arms of Jesus today. God had a better plan than we had. And sometimes that hurts us. It hurts us on this side of eternity. And, but we just must trust God. And that's all I can just stand here and say is that we just must trust him. We don't understand the wisdom and the knowledge of God. In fact, there's a Bible verse that that touches on that, it says in Romans eleven thirty three, O oh, the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. God answers our prayer sometimes with a yes, sometimes with a no. And then thirdly, I stand here and say, that when we pray, when we call upon God, sometimes his answer may be an answer or a response of not now. Not now. God says the timing is not right. 
Maybe that's why he says not now sometimes, because the timing is not right. You know, I think about in, in, in the Gospels and we read about Jesus had friends and three, he had three friends that were very, very dear to him. Two sisters and a brother. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. They were very close. And a lot of times when Jesus would go into their village, they would invite him into their home. They would feed him and his disciples and give them a place to sleep for the night before they'd go somewhere else. So Jesus would oftentimes visit his dear friends, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Now word had gotten out to Jesus one day that his dear friend Lazarus was sick. He was very, very sick man. And he very likely might die. Word got to Jesus about that. And if you would read in the 11th chapter of the Gospel of John, verse 6, it says, when Jesus heard that Lazarus was sick, he abode two more days still where he was. Now, his friend needed him right then. But Jesus tarried intentionally, stayed around two more days longer where he was. Now, that was incomprehensible unto Mary and Martha. Lazarus, their brother, died. Jesus' friend, he died. Why didn't he go right then? Why did he wait? Why did he, when I know Mary and Martha had to have been praying unto him. I, I just know it. You know, we don't see everything in the Bible. We have to read between the lines. And I am fully convinced that Mary and Martha had been praying but his answer was, not now. He stayed around two more days when he could have gone and healed his friend, let him die. You say, I don't get it. I can't grasp it. I don't understand it. Why did he give them an answer of not now? Well, the timing was not right. You see, Jesus had something he was going to do with Lazarus. There is that, that better plan. You know, uh, there is that better plan that I mentioned in my second point when he sometimes says no. He didn't necessarily say no to Mary and Martha's prayer. He just said not now. Uh, you see, what happened was, and you know the story. You've read it countless times. I've preached it many a time. And that is when Jesus finally showed up he did something major. He did something big time. What Jesus did is he said, Lazarus, come forth. By that time he had been dead four days. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot in grave clothes. Jesus said, loose him and let him go. He let him die so he could show the power of God through this resurrection. Sometimes God says, not now, because he's got something else in store that he's going to do. And we just got to let him do what he's going to do and trust him. Brings me to my next point, and that is sometimes he says, not now, because he just simply is trying to teach us patience. We as Christians sometimes are the most impatient people. We are. Oh, I'm not impatient, all right. Let me see you sit here at church in this parking lot about 5 o'clock on any weekday and try to get onto Main Street. <laughs> try to make a left turn. And see how your patience is tested. Go to food line when, when, they, when the weather man, the meteorologist, weather lady or man, meteorologist, 
predicts we're going to have snow. No, uh, there's no snow in our immediate forecast. I'm just sharing an illustration. But what if they were to say we're going to have snow? Then go to Food Line and go get your milk and bread so you can have your milk sandwich. Go to, go to Food Line, get in line behind 150 people and, and see how much patience you have. We as Christians, we want everything right now. Right now, do we not? We don't have patience. So, and, but God sometimes says, I, I'm not going to answer your prayer right now. I, I'll get to it directly, but I'm not going to do it right now because I want you to learn patience in your life. He's not being mean to us. That is a virtue, a strength that he is building in us. For you look at uh, Noah... God told Noah, I'm gonna, I want you to build this ark, you and your three sons, and you and your three sons, and your wife, and your son's wives, and these animals that you are to round up are going to get on that ark, and I'm going to send a universal worldwide flood. How many, do you know how many years? Yeah, I said years. I didn't say days or weeks. You know how many years Noah had to wait from the time he began to build the ark till the time the flood came? He had to wait 120 years. Talk about having to have some patience. Abraham and Sarah, yeah, God promised them they'd have a son. He said, well, that's nothing special, nothing big about that. Well, when you consider how old they were, Abraham was a 75-year-old man when he received the promise, and then they had to wait 25 years. He was a 100-year-old man when Isaac was born. They had to wait 25 years before they saw the fruition of God's promise. Patience. David is one, King David is one who had to learn patience. and had to learn to wait on God. And one time he said in Psalm 27, verse 14, Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Wait, I say, on the Lord. He will strengthen your heart. So what do we do in the meantime? You know, there have been many people, uh, there have been many, many wives who have prayed for their husbands to get saved. And then vice versa too, but uh, there have been many who have prayed for their children to get back in church and to get right with the Lord. We've prayed and prayed and prayed, and God says, not now, keep on praying. First uh, Thessalonians 5, 18, pray without ceasing. He says, pray without ceasing. He says, you know, in Acts, uh, in Matthew 7, 7 again, that, that verse, if it's properly read, Jesus was saying, keep on asking, keep on seeking, and keep on knocking. Keep on asking, keep on seeking, and keep on knocking. Keep on asking, keep on seeking, and keep on knocking. Keep on praying, keep on praying, and don't give up. What do we do in the meantime? What do we do in the meantime? Do something. When we pray unto God and he says, not now, let's don't give up hope. Let's don't give up our faith. Let's keep believing, keep on praying. And then in the meantime, do something. Do what? A hobby? Work? What? Watch a ball game? TV? A movie? What? Do what in the meantime? My suggestion is, Read God's word. Continue to pray. Sing hymns. Worship. Be in church. Live for God. Let us in the meantime continue to pour our hearts out unto God and live for him as we wait, as we patiently wait on his answer to our prayer, on his response to our plea. In the meantime, let's stay busy. Let's do something. Now, if you were to call the church office number right now, I would not answer the phone. Why? Because I'm standing right here. But we do have a voicemail, and that voicemail will answer your call. And if you listen to the voicemail, it will say, it will give you some, perhaps some prompts and things and or it'll, it'll give you a message. What if God had a voicemail? Have you ever thought about that? Or 
the old answering machines. What if God had an answering machine or a voicemail? What if he had one? What would it say when we call upon him? What would it say when we call upon the Lord? Well, I, I, I looked that up, and I found someone had the same idea, and they wrote down some things, and I'll share with you. So this, this did not come from me. It's not original for me. It's just something I copied. What if God had a voicemail? Imagine you're praying your prayer, and you hear this. Thank you for calling my father's house. Please select one of the four, uh, following four options. Press one for requests. Press two for thanksgiving. Press three for complaints. For all other inquiries, press four. Or what if we call God and we got this answer? All of the angels are helping other customers right now. Please stay on the line. Your call will be answered in the order it was received. Would you prefer old Southern gospel music or contemporary Christian music as you wait? Could you imagine getting these kinds of responses as you call on God by way of prayer? But we don't get that kind of response from God. He hears us directly, immediately, and he responds directly, immediately, either with yes, no, or not now. Patience, wait, hold on. Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We don't know how God is going to answer our prayers. We just must have faith. We must believe. We must be persistent when we pray. Don't give up. God has an answer for his kids, for his children, for his family. Either yes, no, or not now. Let's fear, let's respect the answers to God's prayers. I mean, to our prayers. God's answer to our prayers. Let us pray.